Welcome. The following video is an overview of remote neurofeedback or teleneurofeedback. The first steps that you'll need is you'll need a HIPAA compliant online meeting platform. I'll discuss these in a little bit more detail later on. You'll need to decide on the equipment that you're going to use, evaluate your clients for home training to make sure they're suitable, help your clients get ready for home training. Finally, deploy the training platform to the clients, teach them how to use the hardware and software, and then facilitate the sessions. There's some key features for HIPAA compliant platforms. First of all, your online meeting platform needs to provide the ability so that you and your client can speak to each other directly. You need to be able to see the client's training screen, and you need to be able to take control of that screen to manipulate the training or th training threshold as needed. A webcam is critical because you'll need to check your client's ability to hook up their EEG electrodes. And having a clickable meeting link for the client makes accessing that online meeting very helpful. Some examples of HIPAA compliant platforms would be GoToMeeting or Zoom. When you select your equipment for online training, use something that you're already familiar with. It's very difficult and, and complicated to use equipment that you've never used before in an unknown situation when you're not familiar with online training. You'll have to decide what concerns you're comfortable to remediate or optimize via online training. Also, make sure your equipment can provide the accuracy that you actually need to address your client's condition. Some conditions and, and trainings are more complicated than others. Above all, keep it as simple as possible. This will help your client feel very confident in your ability to facilitate and run the session and maximize their ability to be successful. Also remember multimodal therapies. Breath work, talk therapy, heart rate variability biofeedback, all of these therapies complement neurotherapy very nicely in an online training situation. For prepping your client, the key thing is going to be an adequate internet connection. If your client can stream a Netflix movie, the chances are their internet connection is fast enough. A slower internet or sluggish internet connection is going to make the feedback that you see very, very delayed. And it's also going to impede your ability to be able to manipulate thresholds and other features on the screen. Make sure your client has some level of computer literacy. That's almost a given these days, but still there are some individuals, especially older individuals, who may not be as familiar with navigating software and internet and a laptop. It'll be much more challenging for those individuals to get online and be successful at online training. You'll need to plan to use a little bit more training time with these individuals. Make sure your client has the general ability to carry out a session. For instance, if you're working with someone elderly who has chronic pain and has trouble lifting their arms over their head, they may not be able to apply their own electrodes. They may need an assistant or a partner to do so. Or make sure that if you have a child that there's a parent who's willing to learn the process of electrode application. Deployment of your software and your hardware can take place under several different scenarios. First of all, you need to know how you're going to assess your client. If it's an existing client, you may already have the assessment and you simply need to develop the protocol and make sure the client has the proper equipment and software. If this is a new client and they are unable to reach you for an assessment, then you have to decide how you're going to do a home-based assessment. Make sure that your software can accommodate what you're going to need to do with that client. I recommend pre-testing and practicing everything before going live with the client. Make sure that you can almost take that equipment apart and put it back together with your eyes closed. Your level of confidence and smoothness, again, will inspire confidence with the client. Remember, technical snafus will happen. Remember Murphy's Law. But the key is to remain calm, and so will your client, and you will eventually work through it. If you come to roadblocks that you can't surmount, remember, there are lots of colleagues in the field who are already doing remote neurotherapy. Let's reach out to each other for help and form a community. And together we'll get through the whole online training process. Plan to have your first sessions devoted to teaching proper application of sensors. And that, that includes tweaking the training. And then the next sessions, you'll be ready to really facilitate some good neurofeedback. So the first sessions plan to have your client log on to the meeting platform. You're going to watch and teach sensor application. 
Be prepared to check the viability of the signal. That means turning on the software and actually looking at the signal and checking impedance. And then you're going to be able to take control of the screen, set thresholds, and begin to facilitate the training. Make sure your client has a nice quiet space to train, that there's not a lot of background noise or interruptions. As sessions continue, the client's going to become more practiced at sensor application, and they're going to be able to put those sensors on before your meeting. The clinician then needs to log on, check the application of the sensor, visually inspect it via your webcam, check your impedance and signal, and then begin facilitating training. Depending on what your training goals are with your client and the client's concern, the therapist might become confident enough in the client's ability to run a session on their own. And then the therapist may have the client run a few independent sessions in between their meetings. In this case, the therapist begins to monitor the data and statistics to make sure the training is going in the correct direction and also helps the client troubleshoot. Next, I'm going to show a basic online training example. In this example, I'm using Zoom Meeting and a Thought Technology P2 encoder. Please note that this is an example, and training can be implemented on a number of other online meeting platforms and equipment. When I open my software, I can click on New Meeting, copy invitation, and then I'm ready to paste this into my email. Paste it in the body of my email. I put in my client and send. Once my client has logged in, I can ask my client to start video in order to check impedance and sensor connection. The client is then ready to click share screen on their end and we're ready to begin training. Once your client has shared their screen, they're ready to activate their training shortcut, choose themselves, and start training. After I check my client's impedance and I've made sure that the EEG sensors are in the correct position, I might want to record some baseline EEG and save it. At this point, I'm ready to move to my next training screen. In this case, I have a breathing video so the client can begin practice breathing while I set the thresholds properly. The settings instruments and thresholds are tucked away on this screen so that the client cannot easily manipulate them, but the therapist can access them to make necessary changes. Once my breathing screen is complete, I can proceed to the next training task. In this case, a short brain warm up. Again, adjusting my thresholds as needed. Once my client is warmed up, I can go to other tasks, such as potentially a video. And can complete the training session with additional tasks or coaching. When I'm finished, my statistics can pop up. I have the ability to copy them, paste them in a, an email, and send them to myself. I can save them in the database, and they can be available for later trending. Thank you for watching this video on online training. I hope this gives you some ideas as to how you set your online practice up. Have a great day.